now go back to start click right click on computer here and click on properties this will open up the control panel windows click on advanced settings advanced system settings perhaps and click on environment variables then find this path in system variables click on it double click on it and at the end of this variable put a semicolon put a semicolon and paste the va paste the path that you have copied previously and then we are done click OK then click OK again this will take some time and OK now we are ready to compile our short code and execute that file so let us now open up CMD write CMD in start and we have got a new window if you're new to CMD then it's easy to go back to your fo folders if you have placed your code inside another directory so I have placed my uh, code inside F, F disk so I'll be going back going back again and I'll write the name of the disk that I have placed that file so now CMD is reading from F disk I'll start by listing all the directories and I have placed them inside presentations C sharp and uh, So here we are we can see that our message class 1.cs has been saved successfully now we need to compile this code compiling means we need to transfer this C sharp code into machine language so that our computer can understand what we are referring to so let us now do this message class 1.cs and now you can see our compilation is complete now when we want to view all the directories we can see that we have a library folder or an executable file called message class 1.exe now when we run this message class 1.exe you'll see this message has been displayed this is my first class in this video so you can try it out by your own self. We have just seen how we can work with those source files and convert them into a binary files so that our machines can understand. But what happens behind the scenes? Behind the scenes we might not know that this .NET library or the .NET framework contains a common language runtime or CLR that converts our file into machine languages. But there is a advantage of C sharp over other C and C++ languages like the CLR is a uh, library or a framework that contains all the procedures all the routines and all the components that are required to make our C sharp program portables which means if you create a program on C sharp use, uh, on Windows you can run that C sharp program if you have all the .NET capabilities in Linux so it makes virtually all C sharp programs portables. The next thing that we had seen previously during the days of C and C++ traditionally the compilers would only be consisting into those few operating systems like if you created a program only for Windows it would only run for Windows. If you only created a program for Linux it would only run for Linux so that would be a problem so that program wouldn't have that capability that we have now with C sharp so the last thing is that when we have this dotnet capabilities the dotnet what it does it takes the source code the thing that we uh, the code that we create with dot cs extension it takes it and converts that into an intermediate language an intermediate language means an assembly language if you're interested in learning about assembly language and all the architecture of computer refer to my video series on assembly language primer so back to the topic 
Now we were talking about our assembly language. So this source code that we create in C sharp with the extension .cs is taken from this C sharp code and converted by the compiler to its assembly language. So this assembly language, wherever you take it, it will have to be recompiled again into that own machine language. Suppose you take it to it to a machine that runs Linux, so it must be converted into a a uh, program which Linux would understand but if you take it to a Windows system it would only be understood by Windows once you make it compiled to a Windows uh, machine code. This increases the portability of this program that we create through C Sharp. So the compiler only creates an intermediate language that can be converted to any other s languages or any other similar languages perhaps uh, for different architectures but when we create programs only for a specific machine suppose we create a program using C that only runs in Windows XP it can be only run in every XP machines otherwise if you go on running that in a Linux machine that won't work so let us now put those words into perspective remember the file that we created or the source code that we created in C sharp our first class this which we called message class 1.cs this class which is a source code will be converted into an intermediate language first by the compiler this is a non-conventional way of compilation that is only done and you can only find this in C sharp so this code first is converted into an intermediate language that holds all the assembly logic and this assembly logic is then converted by the computer or the same compiler the program that we use to convert our source code into the intermediate language this compiler then goes on converting this intermediate language into a machine language a machine language is just binary it's a string of zeros and ones once again if you're really interested in learning about this intermediate assembly language and understanding how machine languages work please refer back to my video on assembly language primer i hope you will get an in-depth insight on every topic regarding computer architecture now in here you're looking at three steps a complete three steps from a source code to an executable that the machine can understand but in another situation usually if you do not have the dotnet framework your compiler will only convert the source codes or the one that you create with .cs extension into an intermediate language it won't go any further to creating that machine language that the machine will recognize i guess that's the end of this section but I think you're more curious about learning what we wrote in that program, what those classes mean, what those methods that I talked about, what those public keyword, or the, what those static braces, all those, you know, alien looking stuff looked. But don't worry, I'll explain all those in the next section. So I'll see you there. And if you want to watch more, please subscribe and like my videos. And don't forget to leave your comments. Goodbye and salam.